The Coleman BT200X is a fun and capable little bike. It's light-ish and easy to load. That ain't going nowhere. Got plenty of power if you're not in a hurry to get anywhere quickly. But it's easy to control climbing hills and through trails. Fat little tires are pretty good at absorbing bumps and have enough grip to be pretty sure-footed. The stock 196cc engine is fairly fuel efficient. But it sounds pretty good with an aftermarket muffler on it. And in stock form, it goes quick enough, but not so quick that it's easy to kill yourself on it. This little bike is robust enough to go through some fairly deep puddles. And to get you to places that can just take your breath away. Need a better drone. but there's still mechanical devices that can break down and leave you stranded. Shit. Welcome back to the wet coast. It's been a minute since I've done a video. I'm sorry about that. I've been building a mini workshop for my mini bike project. Sorry about the sound quality. At some point I will get insulation and drywall in here and it's going to be a lot better. Now back to the Coleman. Maybe you go deep into the woods just for fun. Maybe you use your Coleman to go hunting. Maybe you use it for scouting new areas. Whatever you use it for. If you go on longer rides, you could be at risk of getting stuck in a remote area, and that could mean a long walk back if you break down. So I put together a list of about 20 things to take with you to increase your chances of getting back in case you do have a breakdown. I've got links to some of these things in the description of the video. Check them out. And I've also got a link to a checklist that I've made that you can download and print. Make sure that each time you go out, you're as prepared as possible. Now, let's get to the good stuff. So one of the most important things you could probably take with you that doesn't take up any room at all is a multi-tool. These things could be a literal lifesaver. The one that I bought that I'm going to throw in my kit and forget about, it's got a titanium frame. I think it cost me about 22 bucks. It's got pliers, cutters, knives, saws, screwdrivers, all built into this tough little package. And you can do a lot with this stuff if you break down. Another pretty important thing to have is a first aid kit. Now, you're not going to be reckless when you're riding. You're not going to do something stupid that ends up in an injury. But just in case, picking up one of these and throwing it in your kit and taking it with you is a really good idea. There's band-aids, there's gauze, there's antiseptic, there's an emergency thermal blanket in here. Well worth having in your kit. Hopefully you'll never need it. Oil. Why would you take oil? You're not going to be doing an oil change out in the trail, are you? No, but these bikes quite often will have a low oil cutoff. And if your oil gets low, like maybe your filler cap isn't on tight enough and the oil is slowly leaking out, your engine may cut out, especially going up and down hills. So a little bit of oil goes a long, long way. It's about eight fluid ounces, about half of what an oil change would be, 250 milliliters. Throw some oil in there, stick in your kit, forget about it. Ripcord. This stuff is dirt cheap, also at a dollar store. You can get it on Amazon. I do have a link in the description for this stuff. You can use this to repair a broken recoil starter cord, get your engine going again. You could also take, say, I don't know, 10 feet, three meters with you, tie it between trees, throw a tarp over top, whatever, tourniquet. But not that you're going to need that, but this stuff comes in handy. Keep some of this in your kit. Dipping into the tools a little bit, ratchet. 
sockets, an extension, dollar store bag. Throw it in here, keep it all together. Just you can buy this stuff dirt cheap at like Harbor Freight in the States, Princess Auto. Six millimeter, eight millimeter, ten millimeter, twelve millimeter, fourteen millimeter. Those will cover almost all of the fasteners on these little bikes. At least all the fasteners that you would probably be able to do a trail repair with. Larger stuff like maybe changing your tire, 17, 19 millimeter sockets. You can carry those around with if you like. Uh, if you're going to do something bigger like remove the flywheel, chances are you're, you're in deep and you're not doing a trail repair on that. Check out the socket size if you want to take that with you. Also, take a spark plug socket for the right spark plug on your engine and bring a spare spark plug. Doesn't have to be brand new, it just has to be a known working spark plug. It's an F7 RTC. Speaking of spark plugs, if you're lucky, your bike came with a spark plug tool. It's literally just a little spark plug socket on one end and a bar. You can undo and redo your spark plug if you need to pull it out. Sandpaper, literally takes up no room, okay. Technically, yeah, it takes up a bit of room. You can use this to clean a fouled spark plug. You can also use it in case you have to do an emergency tire patch because you need to scuff the rubber if you're going to get it to adhere properly. Speaking of tire patches, chunk of rubber from an old truck inner tube, contact cement. Probably do an outside patch if you slash the sidewall. Get you home at least. You can also get tire plug kits. Chances are on a trail, you're not going to actually be doing any small punctures. You're probably going to do some more major damage. So... A little bit of this stuff could get you out of a pinch. Speaking of tire patches, a pump. It's a bicycle pump, but it doesn't take up a lot of room. It'll probably take you half an hour to inflate those fat little tires on the Coleman BT200X, but well worth it. I mean, no point in patching a flat if you can't pump up the tire after, right? A little bit of wire, literally two feet of wire. You don't need much on these bikes. There's not a lot of wiring that can go wrong. If you have a spill and break your kill switch, for example, maybe you just need to hot wire the bike. Just have a little tiny bit on hand. Takes up almost no room. Speaking of wires and electricity, a spare light bulb. This is a P15D bulb. This is an LED bulb. It does work with our bikes. I did another video on upgrading the old incandescent bulb to one of these LED bulbs. They work great. Keep it in the box. Keep it in your kit. Because if your bulb goes out when it's dark, you don't want to be relying on your cell phone and its flashlight to see down the trail. Speaking of flashlights, keep one handy. They're very small. Dollar store bags. You can organize this stuff whatever way you want, and it's going to be safe and secure, and it won't get damaged when it bounces around. Adjustable crescent wrench. You can get most of the fittings, the nuts and the bolts, with an adjustable crescent wrench like this. You obviously, with a small one, you can't go up to some of the bigger sizes. But it might get you out of trouble if you haven't got the right socket. But you're taking your socket set with you, right? So keep this as insurance. Screwdrivers. Obviously, this is a brand new pack that I bought. You don't need all three. Get something like this. Pick the size that you think is going to work for you. I think the middle one is probably fine. It's smaller. It's got Phillips. It's got slotted. It's got Robertson. You're not going to need those on the bike. You can do just about anything that requires a screwdriver on your bike, like adjust your carb or undo the handlebar grips or anything like that that you know would require a screwdriver. Here's the sticky stuff. Duct tape, small little roll of it. It's like the force. It holds the universe together and it has a light side and a dark side. Some zip tie. This is a brand new pack. You don't need to pack them all out with you, but having some of these on hand definitely help out because you may fall off the bike a lot more than parts will, but eventually parts will fall off. Five minute epoxy. Handy to have. You can use it for a whole bunch of different things. One thing you want to be sure to do is read and follow the directions on the back. And earplugs. These bikes are noisy. If you've got an aftermarket exhaust on it like I do, they sound great, but they're a bit loud. Do your ears a favor. Keep a pack of these little squishy disposable earplugs in your kit if you're going to go on longer rides. I think your ears will thank you. A lighter. Doesn't take up much room. There's nothing on the bike that you really need a lighter for to fix, but having a source of fire is a good thing, especially when you're going out in remote areas. You might need to start a campfire to stay warm while somebody comes to save your ass. A rag. And some gloves. These are nitrile gloves. They're six mil. They're pretty tough. Again, they don't take up a lot of room. They weigh next to nothing. If you have to mess around with your chain on the trail, it's going to be nice to not have oily, black, gross hands 
for the rest of the ride and these will come in handy to prevent that and if you need to wipe anything up be it biological or mechanical a little rag will come in handy the mystery bag what is it it's a toe strap we all know that you guys do regular maintenance on your bikes and they're not going to break down are they but when you're out riding around on the trail you might come across somebody else who needs a hand and this little toe strap might help out and fuel this is something you're going to have to judge i've got one of these this is going to go on the rack that comes on the bt 200x holds it just over a gallon it's going to strap on top obviously we don't have gas gauges on these little bikes so unless you do a lot of riding and you kind of know how much gas you're going to use depending on how far you're going to go it doesn't hurt to have a gallon on hand just in case and then what are you going to do with all this stuff well you need to pack it around somehow and while it's pretty light and it doesn't take up a lot of room it's going to be a hassle if you're wearing this thing on your back in a backpack with all this crap jingling around in there so i picked up this 30 cal steel ammo case in a short, I'm going to just show you mount, how I mount this onto the side of the, the carrier rack on the back of the BT200X. Everything that's here is actually going to fit in here, I promise. All right, so I know that's technically a lot more than 20 or so things, but who's counting, really? These things aren't very expensive, and they could potentially turn a miserable day into an okay day. If you think I've missed anything that would make this an awesome off-roading kit for our mini bikes, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the bell, hit the subscribe, hit the like button, and help me grow this channel. I've got a bunch more videos planned. I'd love for you to see them. Thanks for watching. Safe riding. I'll see you in the next video.